Hello everyone and welcome. I have recently set up a new space in my shed so that I can sculpt outside, not breathe in the toxins of Magic Sculpt, and also record it. T to get started, I've already built a base for my carnivorous slug. And for that, I'm now going to build on top of it with Magic Sculpt, put a two-part resin and hardening agent. And I'm going to work these out and coil them out like snakes so that I can mix the two together, because when the two elements combine, they start the curing process. It's a little cold out here this morning, so if I'm sniffling a little bit, it is just from the, the chill in the air. I'm just gonna coil that out a bit, then I'm gonna get the other one. This one tends to be a little bit tougher to work with, but I always like the, the sound of the ticky-tacky of the magic sculpt on the gloves. Speaking of gloves, Whoa! Do not forget to wear gloves. It is very important. And, you know, if you're using this, a respirator is probably not a bad idea. And definitely don't do it inside, especially where you're going to allow it to cure and be right next to it for long periods of time. I made the mistake of that. I ended up having some serious sinus problems for a number of years before having to have surgery. So you get the two. You can see there's two slightly different gray colors. And I'm just going to start mashing them together. This does take a little bit of time. The camera's probably wiggling from the movement and the bouncy of me rocking back and forth. But Magic Sculpt is my favorite material to use. I like not having to bake it. I like that it air cures. I love that it's soluble with like doing a little squirt of water on it just realizing I may have to adjust my setup or move my my carnivorous slug when I need to spray it with water so I'm not squirting my laptop. It's probably not a good idea. So you can see my neighbor's car in the driveway as we share a driveway with our neighbor on the side. at some point this morning they'll bring their dogs out and they will bark like crazy at me because even after being here six or seven years they still like to bark at me and as you can see there's still major strands of the dark gray and the light gray you really want to work that together so that they are one color twisty 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 there we go it's almost like making bread dough. Well, certain types of dough. But if you don't mix it together thoroughly, it won't harden because those two elements will not have combined. And you'll have many, many problems. So for this, I did a wire armature and I attached the wire armature to a cheap wood uh, canvas board to give it something to, to grip onto. And we'll start by, once this is mixed together, we'll start by kind of adhering this to the board to give it some stability. I can already tell already, I did not pull a ton of magic sculpt, so Gonna have to go through this process a few more times. Still striation in the grays. Twisting and blending. Twisting and blending. Now I didn't get my good microphone out here today because this was the very first setup. I wanted to see how things went if everything hooked up well and this is also I'm not going to be doing live streams of this just because the internet out here is not great I can't really respond to things while I have gloves on I can't touch things and worry about that stuff so I'm just going to make these videos and then post them 
and then also probably do speed variations where it just burns through it so you don't have to listen to me ramble on while I'm slowly mixing the magic stuff together. It's getting closer though. I should have had some music on in the background. That would be nice. Coffee break. So this carnivorous slug is going to be in an updated Explorers Legion slash Patreon release. I've already got the plans for what it's going to be in. So I need to sculpt it now so I can then paint it, so I can then photograph it and put it into layout. I really like getting to sculpt things as part of my creative process because I feel like I get loud truck I get textures much better with sculpting way better than I do when I'm drawing or painting okay I think we're almost there I can still see little tiny ribbons of tones of gray but I think I need to get moving on this thing so now I'm going to break off a chunk of it. I'm going to start to flatten it out, kind of making a pancake. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to put it as one layer over top of the actual aluminum foil that's around the wire armature. And the reason for this is to start building a shell or a casing around the slug to give it some outer stability. And then I'm going to mash it down into the wood once we get enough of it on there. As you can see, the slug's kind of jumping around a little bit. That's mainly just because it's not actually connected to the wood yet. So I think for this one, I'm gonna coil this out just a little bit more, flatten it out a bit, and then I'm gonna go along the base of the slug and just kind of push it down into the wood. And I, you might not want to do this so that it sticks because the magic sculpt is going to completely adhere to the wood and then this thing will be stuck on here pretty much most likely forever unless I find a crazy ass way to pry it off or chisel it off or break cut away the wood and then sand the wood on the bottom down which I could do but really right now I'm just gonna kind of get this foundation in here so that it'll just be stable. And then once I have that, I'll spray some water on it. We'll start to maybe get some texture going, blend the pieces of the Magic Sculpt together so there aren't seam lines. It should be pretty good. So because Magic Sculpt blends so well, it's not a big deal to do things like just putting stuff down here. Let me turn this around. Realize you may not be seeing the tail here. Oop, oop, oop. Not quite in camera view. Let's see if I can pull. Nope. How about I can twist? There we go. Okay, so there's the tail that I'm starting to put down. You can see there's lines right in here. And we'll blend that together in just a few minutes. Soon I'm going to have to start making teeth because I want all these teeth right down along this front line here. But let's get this, this critter stabilized first. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to lay it on top of the aluminum foil. Just kind of mash it down into the wood a little bit there. It won't be long before we're starting to squirt some water on this thing. and starting to blend them all together. Since this tin foil here on the back is starting to pop off, it's like it wants to make an escape and doesn't want to be a part of this, this creature. I'm going to go ahead and start to wrap that just a little bit up here. All I'm doing is putting some magic sculpt around it and gently pressing it in. Ooh, the sniffles. Okay, gonna. And then now I'm just gonna keep building up the foundation of the base of this carnivorous slug. And then once once we get the foundation down, then we'll mix up some more magic sculpt. We'll start to put details in. We'll start to put the teeth that are gonna be all down in the front. Again, I'm just mashing out pieces and pieces, making little pancakes. 
Where is the camera? Where is the camera? I'm backwards and confused. Okay, so then I'm gonna spin this around so I can see it better. Again, just putting down some magic sculpt. I wanna cover up all of the aluminum, aluminum foil, so that it's not peeking through. I never wanna have that texture really be a part of, especially organic creatures like this. I think we're gonna be pretty good at getting a, a large area of this slug covered up in this first batch magic sculpt. Um, and then I, I think I'll even wanna to make it easy just to make sure that these things get reinforced. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit right here um, to attach to make sure that this gets stuck on the eyeballs that these golf ball and ping pong balls are gonna be. That'll help just kind of make sure that they are solid and stuck on. Magic Sculpt can, can really adhere to almost anything I've found, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I am going to try and flatten this out even more. Sorry, there's one of the neighbor's cats is outside attacking things, and thus my distraction as I look over out into the driveway. Now this, I'm just going to Gently get this in and do a light coating on here, overlay, just kind of giving that some time to start to harden up as we're building out other pieces. Now the Magic Sculpt will take around four hours to really start to set up. I don't really like working with it after about two, really an hour and a half, um, and then it'll real start to harden up for real. And sometimes, depending on the temperature, the humidity, all that stuff, it can take a little while for it to actually be ready to, to paint and not still be able to get dented. Like, I usually test it by pushing like a thumbnail gently into a certain area that's not going to be overly noticed. So we've got just a little bit more of this batch of Magic Sculpt. And once this is on, we'll spray it, smooth things down. And then we'll mix up another batch. Try and get this connected a little bit. And then once we start having it, I may bend the shape a little bit. May try and adjust things a bit more. But that is all in good time. Due time, good time, I don't know. They're all good times. I really needed this sculpt today. I haven't sculpted in a bit, and it's very relaxing and cathartic for me. So, seeing that the, ca the computer's right there, I'm gonna spray from this side, and you'll see I'm just giving a little, little squirty squirt of some water. I keep that water bottle handy at all times, and then I'm just gonna blend and just kind of smooth with my finger, and it'll start to blend all the seam lines together Sometimes you got to put a little bit of a little bit of thumb muscle into it, but that's like even once this stuff is dry, if you bring a new batch onto it and, and do what I'm doing now with water and blending it in, it will be seamless. And you can also, if you want to, afterwards, um, bring a sander to things and, and really smooth things out. I just never tend to do that. I tend to leave things a little bit more organic. And usually once it's done in the sculpting phase, I'm done with the sculpting and I'm ready to move on to get on to some painting. And once we get this all smoothed out, I may go ahead and start working some weird textures into here. You'll find me pushing down and bearing down with my thumb to add extra lines and dimples and flap, like skin flaps and things like that in the slug just to give some additional fun texture for while I'm sculpting. Now it is important to get details in in the sculpting phase, and I meant to say painting a minute ago. It's super important to get details in in the sculpting phase because that's what really makes it easy to paint. The more details you put in, the easier the painting process is gonna be. Because your dark paints are gonna soak into the recesses and then it's gonna allow you to do some dry brushing on top to really let the, the highlights pop out. So putting in details while you sculpt is a huge way to make your life a lot easier in the future. 
And since we're always trying to bend space and time, looking ahead to the future is definitely always a good plan. So this is still just getting some smoothing it down. I see some some places where it definitely needs to come together over here. And there may be some holes that I have to fill once we mix up even more Magic Sculpt. But we'll see. And I do have a couple of other handy tools that I use regularly to add textures and things to stuff to, to make it feel like it's more natural or part of things. And let's see, should I... I think I should maybe give this slug a way to like maybe give it a rock-like texture so that it could blend in to its surroundings a little more. Maybe give it some camouflage special abilities. Especially if this is, say, perhaps in like a dungeon type setting. I think that'd be pretty cool. Let's see. Since I've got this here and I've got it down on the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and do some some details right now. I think I want to try and see, like, just down around the edges, like it's got this this kind of texture like this that kind of allows it to around the ground. I think this will be fun, and I'll come in with a bigger one and do some even more details. So this is often used for like hair or fur, but I almost see this as like little ten little wispy tendrils. I think that'll be a fun texture. I think when when the painting starts to happen, I think that'll be good. Turn it around here. I'm gonna spray that side with water again just to get it nice and moist. Moist. And you can see this tool, this tool has had its had its use. I need to clean it really well. Sometimes I'm not the best at cleaning my tools. That's why I've never really gravitated towards an airbrush because I know those things have to really be cleaned. So I tend to just wipe stuff off on my apron. Let's see what else I got in here. Sorry about my elbow in the way. I'll note that for future ones. I'm gonna go ahead and give some cracks up along this side just to bring some textures, some additional lines and textures in here. You'll find in a lot of my sculptures I tend to have these lines, something about them I just like, but you can really see those in a ton of my pieces. I try to often follow the flow of some of the, the dips and recesses that I've already made with my hands as I go, and then kind of smooth some of them out so that they're not so hard and rigid all the time. There's no rhyme or reason to why I do this. I just like it. Oh, come on, cat. Get out of here. I do love cats. I don't like outdoor cats, though. Okay, I forgot to smooth this out. All of our cats live in our hut or house. However you want to say it. I'm just going to blend in these a little bit. Now, one of the things I do want with these eye stalks is I kind of want them to have kind of a sinewy feel. So I'm going to go ahead and put some details in here just in case it dries up and I don't get to it later. So with that, excuse my sniffles, I'm going to just give it a little more squirt and I'm going to put in lines that I'm just going to come up and just keep doing a whole bunch of lines together. It's kind of like if your eyeball popped out and had all the retina things. I don't know what they're called because science. <laughs> Get out of here. Good stuff. I understand predators and prey and that's just kind of what outdoor cats do. But I don't really want to be around. Oops, got a little bit of water on my, on my trackpad on my laptop. Let's try and avoid that in the future, Brian. Okay, here we go some of these in. So these creases will end up being really good when painting. It'll be super easy to get lots of detail quickly and some of them it's good to do variation on line weight on weight like how hard you press into it. Do some lighter, do some heavier. Sometimes like if you're using one of the tools that looks more like a shovel instead of one that looks like a scalpel like this one 
you can go left and right to kind of give it a wave and give different widths to the indentions. Okay. We are starting to come together now. I can see things happening. Um, so, next up, I'm going to need to mix up some more Magic Sculpt. We're going to build out more of the foundation of this thing. Then we're going to start putting teeth and stuff in here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and mark the Tum Tum area where I think I want that excess outside of the mouth to be. That way, I know about where I want to build up more like lip type area and where the teeth are going to go into. And there we have that. So now it's time to mix up some more Magic Sculpt, take a sip of coffee, and keep going. Again, mixing up the Magic Sculpt is the long pain in the butt part of this. I didn't bring out one of my tools to really get the Magic Sculpt out easy. This is the hardening agent. I think I'll probably need as much as last time. And I think this time we'll maybe start making some teeth first and just setting those down so that they're ready to go whenever. Sometimes I like to do a bunch of teeth ahead of time so that they're dry, so that when you push them into the, like the softer, pliable clay, it's almost like pushing them into the gums. It really helps give good texture there and give a good difference and a contrast in the hard versus the soft. Um, I think that's, pr let's see, this times two, is that gonna be enough? We'll see. Now we're getting the resin. Resin. This is kicking off some serious fumes. I'm gonna step out here. And this is why it's important to do stuff outside where you're not gonna be breathing it in. working. My hands just are not grabbing it well. This is a slightly older batch of Magic Sculpt, which is part of the reason. Usually I have a slightly larger tool, like a big spatula type thing, that will allow me to pull it out, or shove, scrape it out. But at least I'm shoving my face right down in there, trying not to breathe while, while I'm down in it. Trying, unsuccessfully. Not quite there yet. It's maybe about half the amount I need or a little under. Ooh. I can feel this tool want to snap. Next time I'm out here, definitely need a different tool for this. It's about four thumbs. Okay, I think we've got enough to, to work with. Put a lid on that. Now I do keep that inside in temperature controlled area. That definitely helps things out. You don't want it to get too hot or too cold. You want it to be just right. <clears throat> so as we coil it out, let's see what we can do. Okay. Oh, hey. Here's a little tooth I'd made previously that was just in my stuff, that'll give me a good idea as to what size to make them, I think. Come on, Magic Sculpt. 
work for me. break off. I want to try and get this pretty close to equal lengths when blending it together with the other one. Whoop. And kerplank. Get a couple of leaves on it, a little bit of dirt. Great. That's all right. It'll all blend together. Okay. It looks like it's pretty close to the amount. It can be a little off. It'll just slow or speed up the hardening process just a little bit. Twist, twist, twist. Twist, twist, twist. It's crazy. The sunlight's now coming in. It's making it hard for me to see the screen. But that's okay. May need to get another light just blasting at my face for the next time we play this game. Pulling it, you can see the major color shifts in the two. I'm trying to look at this as how I'm going to photograph it, how it's going to look compositionally once it is photographed, whether I'm doing it straight on from the side at the angle. So right now, this is something that I'm working on, and then I currently have the Molt Kickstarter going live now, but I don't know when I'm going to publish this and post this for folks. This may be well after that, and if it is, then well, maybe Backer Kit will be up with that so that people can still pre-order. It's a Morkborg setting inside the center of the planet. It's weird and strange and lots of sculpture stuff. And continuing to twist, there's still great s contrast in the dark and the light of the, the magic sculpt, so I've got to keep this thing going. Let's turn the carnivorous slug this way. It's 9 o'clock, I've been up since 5.30. I'm about ready for some breakfast. But I really want to get some progress done on this guy. So maybe I will uh, do all the teeth, build out more of the background, start building up some of the weird gum type area or lips. It's kind of like lips. Then maybe I'll take a break and pause this, have some breakfast. We'll see. Maybe I'll go the whole way. I really should do a whole bunch of teeth ahead of time and just have like buckets of teeth. Maybe that's something I'll do sometime over the summer. I mean, over the fall. Summer is the worst time for sculpting with me just because it's so hot outside here having to do this stuff outside. Okay, I think we're I think we're at a good point now. So let's start by making some teeth. All I do is pinch a little bit of, of it off and I just kind of 
twist it, twist it, twist it until it feels like it might be a tooth. Then I'll just drop it down. It's pretty easy. I'll probably do maybe 20 or 30 of these. Then once they're in place, maybe I'll do a little details, maybe cut into it kind of like the lines I was cutting into the side of the slug. Sometimes I start to get little weird uh, twists in these, almost like a unicorn horn or something, and I try to avoid that because I want these to be smooth, more like teeth. But sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you need to get just a little bit of water on your finger just so you can smooth things out. I don't like doing putting it all the way on the teeth now just because uh, spraying those with such a small amount seems like I'm going to overshoot on the water a bit. And see, I've already got five, so if I'm trying to do 20, I'll be done with the, the teeth, teeth side of things before you know it. I think it'd probably be, good, be a good idea to do the teeth, add on the clay that I've got, take a little bit of a breakfast break just to give it some time to set up. I mixed a lot of Magic Sculpt. Sometimes I'm bad at gauging how much I'm going to need, and I just go. And if I have enough or too much, I might as well get all the sculpting part done. It'll just make makes it a little harder when putting the teeth in. So, Ooh. Yeah, I did not think about where the sun comes in when I decided which side of the shed, this one or that one, I was going to put the this on. I just had my flat file behind me on, on the floor. So the other weekend, I built a uh, little bit of a frame and built something onto the back wall of the shed so it would have a lip on the back to sit up on and then I'm able to put my rolling crates that I use for conventions directly underneath and able to lift up like the spinner racks and things like that for my pins and patches off the ground which is nice eventually depending on how things go I'd like to fix this up a little bit more and have it even nicer and maybe make it so that it's it looks better when filming out here, but you know, baby steps. Make sure I keep coming out and filming these things first, I guess. I really enjoyed streaming the uh, sculpting process for a while, but having to deal with the technology side while I'm also trying to actually sculpt there would always be things that would hiccup and go wrong just added so much more complexity when I just wanted to get outside and make or just wanted to get to making things so at least here where I'm recording it's super easy I get everything set up hit the record button and then just kind of let it go and I can always go in and do some editing afterwards and do like the speed version how many teeth do I have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen I've already got 16 teeth I may need 30 I don't know Shoot, may need 50. I don't know. So many teeth. Get a little water on my finger again. Smooth this baby out. Yes. I like you, tooth. And just going to keep making teeth. And then I've got to figure out where this is going. Is this just going... Uh, on BassGrim.com? Is it just going on Patreon as I... Well, I'm probably going to be moving everything over there again. Um, does it go on YouTube to hit even more people? I don't know. And it's weird because I've got... I never pay attention to the YouTube stuff. And then YouTube made me create a different account for some reason. So I've got two YouTube accounts and some of the videos don't seem to be associated with the one account anymore. Too many things to do. Too little time. And then can any of this be edited and slapped up on the Tiki Taki? I've only made a couple of TikTok videos and they were pretty ridiculous and I think I really really like doing that because I like the the I like doing the weird goofy stuff. But all that takes time. Okay, so now I'm, I've got 
a fair number of teeth strewn about the uh, the board. I think I'm going to take a break with those right now. I'm going to take what I've got in my hand and start building out the back of this slug. I'm going to try and get it pretty close to the overall shape that I need. Slap this on here. Mash it in a little bit. It's okay if I my hands mess up the lines that I've created on the front to give me an indicator of where I wanted the mouth to be. Now it's time to just finish fleshing out this this mouthy beast. Hopefully everything's in screen. I cannot see because because of the sun, my screen is just like a dark abyss. I'm just gonna drapes this over here. As you can see, I'm just kind of going over what I've built. And then I can add to this and take away if I need to and keep sculpting and make it exactly how... Oh no, I grabbed the hard tooth. That's not what I want. I'm going to come up around this way. This way. Got to look and find all the places where the cracks are, where the aluminum foil has not been covered up. Because that all has to get covered, whether by moving some of the existing magic sculpt around or by adding new. I don't even remember what my original sketch of this looks like now because it's been a couple of weeks. That's okay. Sometimes the fun is coming in the interpretation while I sculpt and seeing where the magic sculpt takes me and what I want it to be in the future. foundation down. Now I'm going to spray it, smooth it out, and see where I want to add to it, where I want to start putting texture in. Try not to squirt my laptop. All the good stuff. So, just squirting it with water, and then blend. 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 Blend it all together. Make sure, try and make sure there's no seams. Make sure there's no uh, aluminum foil. Make sure the train honks as it goes by in the back. train close by. That sound to me is very soothing. Now the shape of this thing is, it's looking weird, but that's okay. I'm going to bulk it up and add around the like top part. I don't know if you'd call that a head or not. It's definitely getting a little weighty, so I'm going to kind of lean this up a little bit because I don't want to be bending over and, and crushing. Fill it out just a little bit back here. Build it up. Oop, bonking my head on the lights. Okay. Now that that foundation is in, I think I want to start to build up the sides, like because I kind of want the, the chest to like open up and that's where the, the teeth will be, like the underside. So I'm gonna kind of roll it out in coils to go up either side. So it'll be like this, but I think that's a little much. I'm gonna try and get relatively close in coil size. Nothing, things don't have to be symmetrical, but having them similar is not a bad thing. Okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, so I'm going to spin it this way. I'm going to do this side first. I'm just going to kind of start to put it on here. Then I will work it in. I'm going to go ahead and spray all down the seam. 
I'm just gonna blend it in with my thumb. Oh, I should do the inside seam too. And then I can go at it from both sides. And I'm just kinda blending this as like a flap, this lips almost. it in. I think the cold weather is affecting it a little bit. It's not even that cold, but it's chillier than normal. Okay, I think that side's on for now. And we'll come back and add some texture and details and stuff. This side same thing we're gonna come up right along here following kind of the, the line that I put in originally I'll even bring this down down to the ground then I'm gonna shove my thumb in here just to make some interesting texture in here in the center bit but now let's smooth this lip area out. Whoa, shoot. Got my laptop just a little bit. I'm sure that'll be fine. As everything shorts out, recording stops. And that is the end of everything. Now this magic sculpt should set up and completely connect and not have any issues bonding to the existing magic sculpt. that I just accidentally dropped. Okay, I'm gonna bring this in a little bit. I wanna start to smooth out this a little. Let's get some, some tools. Let's get some tools to help us on our quest. Let's see, I've got this shovel tool. I'm just gonna kinda follow up along the line that that's the seam is, just kinda blend it in and then also make some interesting texture just to kind of cover some of it up, but also it, it will add to the painting process like I'd mentioned before. Smooth it down a little bit. Kind of gives it like a weird wrinkly type vibe, which I think will be cool. Some of these you just kind of go for and hope they work out, you know? Not everything's gonna be perfect, which is a-okay. But I like how that texture is coming together now with that. And then we'll spin it around. Do something similar on this side. As I said, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, but similar would be good. I'm gonna hold it here. Now one of the things I'd hoped for originally was giving it like a, a foundational base to, to really uh, be able to be steady while I'm sculpting it because I haven't allowed any time for the curing process, you know, everything's still very pliable, which is okay, but sometimes you wanna, especially with bigger pieces, you wanna give it a day and come back to it so that you have that time to allow it to really set up. But then sometimes you also just wanna dive in and keep things going. Now I'm gonna add a little more texture to this on the back. I'm gonna take a rock from outside my yard that I've been using for years and give, a, give it a little bit of texture this way. It kind of helps, It'll like a, earlier I had mentioned the idea of giving it some camouflage so it can blend in. This, doing this on the back side of this slug will allow it to kind of fit in to its natural surroundings. All right, got some stuff going there. I need to smooth this out here with these eye stalks. I think the head may be one of the last things to do, but as you can see, it's getting a little bit of a lean to it. 
don't know if that's from what I originally did or something else. Let's see. Here's a tooth that fell out, I think. Let's look at putting some teeth in. So for this, I think I'm going to do a little indention, right, and see if I can see what happens when I just take a tool and kind of make a little circle. Normally you'd wait for these to be dry and put these in, but since it's not, I'm just going to mash them in here. And actually before that, let's give some other texture into this area. Let's do let's do a this is kind of like a little flat round thing. It almost gives like a scaly type texture, but I'm just gonna do this all in here. Almost like fish scales, but this will kind of be fun for when going to paint. It should give some good visual effect. Pressing harder in certain areas and lighter in others so it has variance. And a lot of this will be covered by teeth and stuff, but for now, it gives some interesting look. And it also is now covering up my thumbprints that came through the uh, through the gloves, which I never really care about whether or not that stuff is there or not, because you know these are all handmade, one of a kind things, and I'm cool with them still having a little part of me there. I need to spray this again. So the spraying gives it, makes it a little softer, makes it a little easier to do certain things. Getting closer down here. Work from the bottom up now. glad I'm getting to do this today. I've got quite a few things I need to make. And now with this, I also didn't want these to be like the dots to be all consistent and all over the place, so I'm kind of moving things around and don't want it to be like a complete straight line or pattern. There we go. All right. Pretty happy with those. I haven't used that tool like that before, but I think I will do it again in the future. Now I'm going to go ahead and do something similar. Put a little hole in here just so that I can put one of these teeth in here. Jam that in. I'm poke, I can feel that I'm now starting to poke through on the other side, so I don't want to do that too much, so I may do a little less of that and may just do more just jamming these teeth in, but give them a little bit of a place to live. Yes. Oh, the teeth. Where are these bigger teeth coming from? When did I do these? Oh, wait. I guess it was just a couple minutes ago, huh? And then once these are in, I'll come back with the tool and put some details and stuff into them. I think we may need more teeth. I don't know. poking them down just a little bit will help add to it. <laughs> Definitely going to have to come in and do some stuff in the face type area and come in on the eyes. But this can all happen first. Oh, shoot. Looks like I dropped a little on the ground. Maybe one of the teeth. It's like, what is sticky on the ground?
It was me. Me, the tooth. Okay. I'm going to just start putting these in, and then we'll press them down and get some details in once these are all in. I think that's a better way to go. come together. As you can see it hasn't been a super long time that I've been working on this. Yeah, I think definitely gonna need more more teeth. You don't want to stay on there do you? Let's get you in there and then we'll get let's get this to kind of help press you into place. Sometimes it doesn't always want to stick to the magic sculpt and you have to push it down in and blend it in, which is okay. Just need the two pieces to combine. I don't know. Oh, there's the, this was the original hard one. Let's get you in there. Let's jam that down. So with that, you can just shove it right down into the soft pliable stuff. But when they're both soft and pliable, you can't really do that. And I will need to use tools to blend these together and work them in. Otherwise, the uh, some of these teeth will just fall off. So, let's see. What do I want to use for that? I will use this tool, I think. I've got a bunch of Magic Sculpt buildup on this. I need to scrape off. Oh, no, this one's even better. So this end is just like kind of like a little tiny triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and squirty squirt all down here. And let me spin it this way. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. I'm just going to kind of push things down and hook them in a little bit. Also give a little bit of texture. Oh my gosh, train. We hear you screaming. And these little details will help it just kind of stick in a little bit. Some of the earlier teeth that I jammed holes in are should be fine. This is just kind of merging the two pieces of magic sculpt together a bit more. Plus I like the lines that come into the teeth from doing stuff like this. Pressing on, I'm trying to press down on the one that was the one hard one, and it's like, why is, why is it not pliable? Oh yeah, there's an old tooth in here. Old tooth. Okay, so I've got all those in there. Now, do I need more teeth? Kind of feels like I need more teeth. I don't know. Move some of this around. See how this can bend and go. But at the same time, maybe it doesn't need more teeth. Maybe it just need some textures in the area where we just were. What am I looking for? Is this it? I'm just gonna put some textures in here in the gum type area where you would normally see some sort of lines and textures and I think that'll make it fun for painting. few lines here and there. Oh no, teeth. Get back in there, tooth. 
I'm making some of these teeth even more loose. That's not cool. Okay. Dig that. I think that's cool. I like how that's going. So now, for what is here. Now I think I want to do some weird bumps and things like that along the back. But I think just for like the very top of this, I kind of want to bring the mouth together almost like the corner of a mouth. Um, that I think I need to do a really thin coil. I don't want it to be too much. Almost just like, like that. And then I want to blend it in. And then I need to tamp down the stuff leading up to it. Just make that kind of weird. Yes. And then we'll use the, nope, that's not it. Where are you? There we go. Oh, pat, 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 pat. Do that into there. Some of this going on. Do some lines coming up here. And then I'm going to do some of this texture stuff here. Here, here, here. All right, and now we'll start building up a little bit more along the back. And then this creature will be ready to wait and be painted. So I do want to do some weird things, maybe coming up around the eye stalk type things, like maybe do some stuff like this. We'll blend it in. It's like they're clamping on somehow. Also making it feel that it's not so weird and arbitrary how that's there. It's like little fingers holding onto the eye stalks. Now, spray some water, blend stuff together, blend it, pull it all down in together, using the back of the shovel to really start to pull this in as one. See how the clay really blends together with that. side. Now we're going to keep pulling this stuff down. Oh, I almost knocked my coffee cup over. That's not cool. Don't want to do that. Make a big boom. From the side. Okay, now I'm starting to see things now. Stuff's coming together. Yes. Bring all this in. Bring all this in. Blending it. Now or now things are starting to texturally come together. It feels like it's gonna be getting more cohesive as I go. That's part of this is the exploration and experimenting and seeing what this creature is going to become. I do want to do a little bit of something on this backside, so I'm going to push it forward because it keeps leaning back. And if it ends up being leaned back in the final, that's totally fine. Now, I have to be careful at this point because everything is wet. 
everything soft. So if I do too much now, it will uh, press down and break other stuff that I've already done. And I don't want that. Ooh, one thing I didn't think about, which I should, is I should make the lips here kind of like the bottom underneath where I did those texture in there. I need to do that, because that'll kind of bring it all together. But first I put these kind of moles, or bumps, on top of here in a couple spots. I've got a lot of moles, so I tend to do this and put these on creatures, just because it feels a little more like me. Okay, I did, I am going to make these kind of smashed into the texture. There we go. And I'm going to do a little of that around here. All right. Now, let's look at what I just mentioned. I do, let's see, pull those up. I kind of need to do something around the eyes too. We'll get to that in a second. Where'd the rake go? Oh, yes. The rake was the one that we did with that. I need to spray that. So the rake is what we used down on the bottom, and that's what really gave that kind of texture. So I'm going to try and just do some of that here and hope that it works out on the outside. Though I think I just sprayed the inside. I don't know. I may need to press bear down a little bit more. As it gets less and less pliable. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna spray it on the outside. Details in. All right. All right. I think that one's, that part's good. I really like how this is coming together. I think it's I think it's getting pretty damn close to done. I need to do some some stuff around the eyeballs, which is going to be hard because you know it's not dry. And everything's pliable. But that's okay. I think I need to do a handful of coils that will just kind of bring as almost like weird things holding the eyes in place. And are these really eyes? I don't know. They could just be weird orbs. They could be things that attract uh, prey to it. Maybe they glow and like little little lights to try and attract prey and then snatch with the mouthy face. And I do have too much magic sculpt. I didn't make a little too much. Could make more teeth, but I don't really feel like I want to do that. I think I want to leave that the way it is. Okay, let's see what happens when I just bring some of these into play. Two. Stay on there. Three. I said stay on there. Three. Four. these out. A few more coils. There's one.
Okay, there we go. So now I'm just gonna blend some of these in with the shovel looking tool. I think it'll be all set. Gotta be gentle. Gentle giant, Brian. Gentle. Come on. There we go. Shoot. Gonna have to tilt you. Oh, I really wanna do that. Thing is looking like it wants to pop off. And not in that fun way that the kids are all using. There we go. All right, up here. More. Oh no, get back on that. There we go. All right. I think I'm pretty pleased with that. Got texture there, got texture there, got texture pretty much everywhere. Okay, that's it for this adventure. Till next time, I hope to see you again. Now I cannot see anything on the screen to be able to stop recording. Whoa, there we are.